This is Personal Injury Court. Good day, everyone. This is the matter of James versus Sutton. Mr. James, it's my understanding you're suing Miss Sutton for injuries that you sustained while you were at a music festival that Miss Sutton put on. You're asking this court to award you $10,000 for your past medical expenses, $5,000 for future medical expenses, $20,000 for lost wages, and $250,000 for pain and suffering for a total award of $285,000. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And Miss Sutton, your response to this is very simple. If he had left the music festival when everybody else did, he never would have been hurt, correct? Yes, Your Honor. Well, let's get into the legal sauce. What brings you to a music festival? I would recently won a contest via the radio that granted me a ticket along with a backstage pass. Okay. For a meet and greet VIP after the concert had ended. So I drove separately to meet up with my friends and stayed about an hour and a half after the concert before I was preparing to leave. Okay. Now, Miss Sutton, you put on music festivals. Yes. I'm, Tell me about them. Sure. I've been in the music and entertainment industry for over 20 years. We do loads of outdoor festivals. They're always sold out. They're very popular. Um, as a matter of fact, all the radio stations love them. All we kinds of music? With them. Absolutely, all kinds of music. I oversee and I manage all of the logistics of the venue, the artists, the parking, and all the surrounding public areas. So from the piano to the portable toilets, you manage it? Absolutely. Okay, so you're getting all kinds of people, but pretty much some of the things are the same. People have to use the bathroom, right, at Absolutely, a festival? Absolutely, which we provide as a courtesy to our attendees. Okay, you ever had a problem with your portable toilets before? Never. So, Mr. James, tell me how this happened. Well, Your Honor, uh, I was staying after the concert about an hour and a half. As anyone else would, it was granted a backstage pass. I was hanging out with the band, enjoying myself. Had a few drinks, yes, had something to eat. So as I was preparing to make the long ride home, I elected to use the restroom and a portable toilet that was placed right near the parking lot. As I entered the portable toilet um, and attended to my business, I was sitting on the toilet when all of a sudden I heard a truck fire up. Okay. And I noticed you heard the engine of the truck. Yes, sir. That is correct, Your Honor. Okay. Didn't think anything of it at the time. Um, figured they were leaving the premises, doing their job. I noticed it getting closer before I noticed a loud thud. Okay. Immediately knew it was occurring. Um, dreaded the situation as I saw it happening before my eyes. The portable toilet topped backwards, slamming into the ground. I immediately snapped my neck, whipping my head into the ground, which caused the concussion. I was covered in not only human waste, but also this blue chemical from the portable toilet. Head to toe, in my mouth, in my nose. It was mortifying. Uh, if you can only imagine, throughout the entire days of this festival, the entire night, uh, you gotta think, I was one of the last ones there with my backstage pass. The amount so the toilet people, was full. The amount of human traffic that had entered into that toilet before I entered in it. It, it makes me want to throw up just to imagine, as you can see. Constant human traffic in and out of there before I'd entered. That's a lot of folks. That's correct. And a lot of use. That's correct. I have to admit this. There have been times I've been in one of those portable toilets and I see that stuff down there and I say, what if you fell in there? I guess it's no longer hypothetical. This yeah. stuff was all over you. This will be the last time I ever use a portable toilet in my life, Your Honor. So, Miss Sutton, obviously you want folks to use the portable toilet. Yes, of course. H how do you protect against somebody pushing it over and knocking it over? Well, we've never had that incident. And as you can see, they're, they're situated on a level ground. Okay. I wasn't advised of the, in of the situation until about a half hour after it occurred. Although it's very unfortunate that this happened to him. And we're extremely sorry, but we didn't do it. Well, but this isn't his fault. You're not saying this is his fault. He was simply trying to make a deposit, but right? But was Sounds he? Sounds like she is, right? But honor. was he? He was there long after that concert and the festival had ended. So he talked about being there with the band. Uh, why'd you stay so late? No one told me I was supposed to leave the premises, Your Honor. I had no, no one warning me of any time I needed to leave. I had no one warning me that these portable toilets were in danger of using. So, uh, to my knowledge, they were there for the use of the customers, as they always were the entire day. Your well, Honor, doesn't most of the people leaving kind of give you a clue it's time to go? I was enjoying myself. Your Honor, I... It's not every day you win a contest like this, Your Honor. 
Yes, this sir. was, I was using my right However, with this VIP backstage pass. Your Honor, I've submitted yes, as an exhibit our concert schedule. It's our official schedule showing that the concert ended at midnight. Yes, ma'am. Let's take a look and at it. And this gentleman here, this incident took place at 2 a.m. This is the concert call sheet. So people try to stay on schedule with this, right? Yes. So absolutely. 11 p.m. is final set. And then 12 a.m., that is midnight. Yes. Rap strike venue. Is that when folks are supposed to leave? Well, that's about when the meet and greet is, 15 minutes max. Those artists are tired. They played all night long. They do a quick picture of the handful of people that had the backstage pass, and they are out of there on their road. And by 2 o'clock, all my people are gone. It was not two hours after the concert had ended. It was an hour and a half max, just so mm -hmm. we're clear. You do acknowledge, though, that you stayed quite a bit after midnight, right? Not the time, not, not the time frame that she is exhibiting here. That is incorrect. No, that's not true. She's well, lying. what do you remember? How long did you stay? It was an hour and a half max, Your okay, Honor. Okay, so and like that, I said, no that one takes had you to one thirty, right? Correct. Okay. Now, is it that weird that people stay an hour and a half, Miss Sutton? Oh, absolutely. Especially because our parking lot was ninety-five percent empty. Well, ninety-five percent means that uh... the other five percent was probably my employees and okay. maybe him and his friends. So, tell me about your injuries. Yes, Your Honor. I, on impact. I suffered whiplash and a severe concussion from my head smacking the ground. Along with being covered with this blue chemical, I was covered in human excrement, which gave me hepatitis A. So some of this stuff got in your mouth and your eyes? That is, I was head to toe, Your Honor. Head to toe, completely covered, and I could not avoid hepatitis A, which has caused my skin and my eyes to turn yellow. Yeah, your, your medical records that you submitted show that you were jaundiced and had quite an infection. That's correct, Your Honor. I've been in severe pain since the incident. Um, aside from the neck brace, the hepatitis A has caused severe liver pain. My eyes, like I said, have been burnt yellow. My urine has turned the color of coffee, Your Honor. Well, your medical records indicate that your internal organs were definitely affected. That's correct. So it sounds like, though, the hepatitis is worse than the whiplash. That's correct, Your Honor. Miss Sutton, a portable toilet getting knocked over, that is an odd event for one of your concerts, correct. right? Correct. And it, but nonetheless, this is not our fault. He should not have been there at this time. It's not your fault. Uh, that's your excuse? That is your excuse. We didn't knock it over. Folks. We have no idea who did it. Well, it happened at your event. Sure. In yeah. one of your portable toilets, he clearly didn't do anything to knock it over. I don't know. Your Honor, who she he needs to take responsibility for this, for we everything that's occurred to me. We have parking attendants directing traffic 45 minutes after the concert ended, and as I stated, that parking lot was 95 percent empty when this happened. Your Honor, I received no verbal, no sign warning that these portable toilets were in any danger of using. Because they weren't. If I had, I would not have used them. You're asking this court to award you a quarter of a million dollars for pain and suffering. What's been the worst part of this? To be honest, I think that quarter of a million is taking it easy. The worst part has been being covered in human excrement with my pants at my ankles. It was the most mortifying moment of my entire life. Mr. James, you mentioned hepatitis A. To understand this disease, this court has consulted Dr. Asma Khalid. Sheriff, will you get Dr. Khalid? Yes, Your Honor. Hello, doctor. Will you please explain the nature of the disease that Mr. James contracted in this accident? Hepatitis A is a virus that's highly contagious. It's usually spread person to person, fecal or route, such as changing dirty diapers or handling contaminated foods. So the liver is located in the upper right quadrant of your abdomen. It's essentially a huge filtration system that takes blood from your body and filters it through the hepatocytes, which are liver cells. Blood passes through, takes foods and nutrients as well as toxins or bacteria and virus. Now the hepatitis A virus passes through the blood, filters through the hepatocytes, but once it's inside the hepatocytes, it infects the liver cells and causes them to become inflamed. They obviously don't handle that very well and you develop some scar tissue, causing the whole liver to become inflamed and enlarged. So why does your skin get yellow? 
it's basically called jaundice. Okay. And just like, you know, a newborn has jaundice and the hepatocytes release uh, a chemical and it basically spreads through your blood, causing your skin to turn yellow. Doctor, thank you. You are released. Thank you. Your Honor, I can say with 100% confidence that Miss Sutton is 100% responsible for what happened to me. Mr. James, how do you know that one of Miss Sutton's employees hit this portable toilet? Your Honor, I have a diagram to explain how the incident occurred in the parking lot. All right, well, let's put your diagram up on the plasma. You submitted that to the court. Why don't you go over and show me how you think this happened? Upon entering the portable toilet, that these two trucks were placed right here okay. before entering. As I did, I heard this truck fire up and then immediately begin to reverse back towards me. How did you know it was in reverse? Circumstantial evidence, The beep, Your and Honor. I could tell it was getting close to me, Your Honor. This is here. Okay. It got louder and louder. So that backup beep got closer to you? Correct. All right. And it was before I could even put it together that all of a sudden, it hit this portable toilet, knocked it on its back, in which then I slammed into the ground following it. This is and all immediately circumstantial. Was being covered. Immediately was covered with human He has wits. absolutely no proof that it was one of my trucks or a truck now, at all. Now, but hold on for a minute. These trucks weren't concert goers, right? No. They were production. This wasn't a trucker's convention. My production trucks were parked out in front, but towards closing, they began to leave. So I kicked my way out, almost like my own coffin, Your Honor, covered in this waist, managed to pull my pants up and realize the truck was completely gone off the premises. Now, for the record, Miss Sutton, all six of these trucks that were on that diagram are your production trucks, right? Correct. Driven by your employees, correct? Correct. For all 20 years, we've been doing this and never had an issue. That's hearsay. You cannot have him have that photo in there. He has no idea that was one of our trucks. I'm confident, Your Honor. Like I said, I distinctly remember two trucks being placed in front of the portable toilets. As I exited it, there was only one. You can return to the podium. You keep throwing ar around the term circumstantial evidence. Yes, because he's, he's giving us evidence that he says, I know for a fact without a fact. Well, let me tell you about evidence. In a courtroom, there are really two kinds of evidence. There's direct evidence and then circumstantial evidence. A lot of people make the mistake of thinking that circumstantial evidence is of a weaker, less reliable source. It is not. Circumstantial evidence is direct evidence that indicates a certain fact. For example, if a person walks through the snow and you see them walk through the snow, you can testify, I saw someone walk through the snow. That's direct evidence. However, if you go to that same snow and you see my size 13 footprints all the way up to my motorcycle and I'm sitting on the right. motorcycle, that's circumstantial evidence right. that I walked through the snow. They are of there equal value. There is no proof that I did. We have a natural barrier of our trucks placed out so no accidents like this would happen. Natural, there was no natural barrier. There was no verbal, no sign warning me of any danger using these. Park in front of the portable toilets to act as a shield, preventing anything to interfere with them. I was covered in literal human <laughs> because of her, Your Honor. Be human waste and this blue chemical. Be careful about your language. I understand what you're covered with, but we got to call it a different name. Oh. Folks, I think I've heard what I need to hear. I'm ready to render my decision. When I was a young lawyer, I used to think that lawsuits were simple, particularly personal injury lawsuits, because all the plaintiff has to prove is that someone did something wrong, that is, you'd have to prove Ms. Sutton did something wrong, or one of her employees, and that their wrong caused your injury. Hardly ever does it turn out to be simple in the many cases I presided over. But this one is simple. You're responsible for your employee's actions under a doctrine called respondeat superior. It simply means that the master must answer for the actions of the servant. Here, if your driver backed into that portable toilet, you pay the bill. Let's look at the evidence. We don't have direct evidence of who backed into this portable toilet, but the circumstantial evidence is this. While you're sitting in this portable toilet, you hear a truck engine fire up. Correct. That's a very distinct sound. You then hear the beeping, the reverse safety signal of the truck backing up and it's getting closer to you. And your portable toilet flips over and so does your life. That circumstantial evidence is superior weight of who backed into this portable toilet. I am convinced it was one of your employees that backed into this toilet.
And because of that, I find in your favor, and I'm going to give you everything that you ask for. I'm awarding you $10,000 for your past medicals, $5,000 for your future medicals, $20,000 for your lost wages, and $250,000 for your pain and suffering for a total award for you and against the defendant for $285,000. That's my final award, and this matter is adjourned. Thank you, Ron. Our attorneys across America just viewed this case for the first time. Let's hear what Hoyt Tessner has to say. Here, Judge Gino cites the legal principle of respondeat superior. This Latin phrase means the employer is responsible for his employee. There was no direct evidence that the employee backed into the portable toilet, but there was circumstantial evidence. The law considers circumstantial and direct evidence the same. Plaintiff saw the truck, went into the toilet, heard the truck engine start, followed by impact. Afterwards, no truck. Injury Court. Good day, everyone. This is the matter of Larson versus Reinhardt and Clarkson. Mr. Larson, it's this court's understanding that you are suing Ms. Reinhardt and Ms. Clarkson for $2.4 million for past medical bills, $100,000 for future medical bills, and $2.5 million for pain and suffering for a total of $5 million. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And Ms. Reinhardt, Ms. Clarkson, you all believe that his injuries are his fault. That is, you provided a concert, he was injured, he got what he paid for. Yes, Your yes, Honor. Is yes, that Honor. correct? Yes, Your yes, Honor. Honor. All right, now let's get into the legal sauce. Mr. Larson, tell me how you, you got to going to this concert. Well, Your Honor, me and my girlfriend have been dating for two years now. We met at a video game convention two years ago, and we shared similar interests. Both am, you all are music lovers? Yes. Uh, I'm also a pro gamer, so I play video games competitively and sometimes uh, for stream online. We you were, get paid to play games? Yes. Yes, okay. Your Honor. All right. Um, and so we were wanting to do something special for our two-year anniversary, and we have never been to an Epic Star concert together. Epic Star is my favorite artists ever. I've been to well over 10 Epic Star concerts in the past. So you really like Epic Star? Yes. Miss Star, that's gotta feel singer. good. Yes. yes to have, yes. have fans who love you like that? Yes, Your Honor. And I just love the way she talks about love and peace in her music. Um, so she really connects with you with yes. the music. Yes, and I think she connects with a lot of her fans. When you go to her concerts, they're energetic um, events. You go and everyone is full of energy. Miss Clarkson, you're the yes. owner of this venue, right? Yes, Your Honor. And uh, you have these kind of concerts all the time? All the time. We and actually um, really wanted Miss um, Epic Star to come and perform because it was her American tour. It was the last leg. It's, it's a pretty height type of atmosphere, so it was standing room only. And she did an amazing job. So, Miss Star, you're expecting all these fans out there, right? Yes, Your Honor. People who love you. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, does it ever get old for you? No, it doesn't. Um, my most important thing is to make sure my fans are happy. Like he said, I'm about peace, love, and you know, just connecting with my fans. And that's the most important part to me, making sure everyone's safe and everyone's having a great time, pretty much. And you mentioned safe. I imagine when you realized that this young yes, man was Your injured, Honor. it kind of got to you. Yes, Your Honor, because like I said, I do care about my fans, so it does bother me that he is injured. So, Mr. Larson, you and your girlfriend, you go to the venue. Where, where do you decide to stand? Well, we wanted to get as close to the front of the stage as possible because seeing her up in person, she really brings the energy to the whole crowd. She's got a good show. Yes, exactly. And she has this signature move she does near the end of every concert. A where, signature move? Yes, where she um, stage dives off the concert and then crowd surfs around for a while. Tell me how it happens and what do you do? At every single one of my concerts, I always do the stage dive um, or crowd surf. Okay. Um, at every single one of them, like he said, he's been to 10 to 20 of my concerts, so he knows this. That that's you do it do every, every time. Single, every single one of them. This is what my middle son calls the hype move. 
Yes, they love it, and that's why I do it every single one, because like I said, it's about pleasing them. So they love when I do it. Everyone knows, so it, it's an awesome time. They know that I'm coming because I say, like, three, two, one, here I come, like, so that they know that they're ready so like, for me three, to come three, two, one, Yeah, and then I, here I come, and then I jump out, and then, you know, they know that I'm coming. They and know they, to they be careful you. and to pay attention, catch me and everything, yeah. Okay, that's and that's what you anticipated, Mr. Larson? That, that she was going to jump off the stage? Absolutely. Um, we were trying Tell to... Tell me how up. you got hurt. Well, Your Honor, we knew that at the very end of the concert, Epic Star does her signature stage dive. And since we knew that was coming, we were hoping to get out a little early uh, to avoid the crowds when we were leaving the concert hall. And so we were on our way out. I turned around, and suddenly I feel a sharp pain in the back of my neck. It, now, when you turned, did you turn away from the stage? Yes, Your Honor, okay. towards the exits. So what happened next after you turned? Um, I felt the sharp pain in the back of my neck, uh, and it crumpled me over. Uh, my girlfriend came over to see if I was all right. And when I turned around, I saw that Epic Star had kicked me in the back of the if head. If you were turned around, there's no way you could see if I kicked you. So, Ms. Star, do you remember this event? No, I do not recall this at all. Ms. Clarkson, were you there? I was there. What, what do you remember? Your Honor, I did not see the kick. However, I did see him fall down. I sent over the head of security. He's been with me 10 years. I trust him. And I went over to see if he was okay. He stated that he was fine, that nothing was hurt, that he was okay. So, Mr. And Larson, at left. that time, you were, you were okay. Yes. You felt the, the pain, but you weren't at feeling the time, much more it than it seemed that. like a minor injury at best. I was with my girlfriend. I didn't want to seem like a wimp needing help out of the theater. Um, but by the time we got to our car, I was having such an excruciating headache that I didn't feel safe driving anymore. And, and this was caused by the stage dive? Yes. Yeah. Miss Starr, uh, look at the uh, plasma here. This is kind of, uh, is this the way it happens? Yes, Your Honor, is, it is. Is this how you end up when you connect with the crowd? Yes, Your Honor, it is. That's why I don't see how there's any way that I could have kicked him, how high they hold me up. Like I said, I say, three, two, one, here I come. They know I'm coming, so they hold it up. That way, it's all safe. Okay, so Miss Starr jumps off the stage. You feel an impact yes. to the back of your head. Then what happens? Well, Your Honor, the next day, I woke up with continued severe head pain um, and whiplash. And you didn't feel this the night before when you were at the concert? No, it got much worse overnight. Um, and when I finally decided to do something about it, my girlfriend took me to the ER and the doctors confirmed that I had whiplash from a blunt force trauma to the back of my head. The headaches were included in that. The doctor gave me a neck brace and told me to keep an eye on things, but it didn't get better after that. Your Honor. In fact, 10 days later, I suffered a stroke. For the record, how old are you? 24 years old, Your Honor. Your Honor. And, and you believe this stroke was caused by this, this uh, stage dive? Yes, the doctor that I saw and, after And the kick stroke. in your head? Yes. And he said that he had this 10 days later, so I don't get how that has anything to do with my concert. I'm sorry that it happened to you. It's a terrible Absolutely. thing, especially at your age, but it wasn't my fault if it happened 10 days after. Your Honor, your Honor I would like to point out that I do have a witness to the kick in the back of my head. Okay. While I had turned around to leave, my girlfriend was still behind me and I see watching that, Epic Star. That, that you, you brought your girlfriend? Yes, Your Honor. Could you please step to the podium so I can hear from you? Because I want to hear what you saw. For the record, what is your name? Um, my name is Gina McNeil. Now, Ms. McNeil, you were at the concert with Mr. Larson, right? Yes, Your Honor. Tell me what you saw. Um, I saw Epic Star kick him in the back of the head. That is not true. It's but, but, exactly true. I didn't kick him. Excuse Obviously, me. Obviously, you're going to take your boyfriend's side. Ms. Star, Ms. Folks, we need, we need to have order. We need to have order. Please continue, Ms. McNeil. 
Yes, Your Honor. So he was definitely in pain. The security guard also witnessed it happen along with myself. I also have proof of the text message no, he sent me no, the next morning. No. Excuse me, I'm no, talking. Ma so What's the next morning, he texted me talking about headaches and trouble breathing and chest pains. And Your I Honor. But that's not that proof that, that's not proof that I did it. So, so uh, that's not proof that I you did. said you have a text message with you. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Sheriff Matt, could you retrieve that from Ms. McNeil? Your Honor, while you're waiting on that text message, you heard the um, Thank Mr. You. Larson state that we offered him. So, Miss McNeil, this treatment. is the text message that you received. Yes, Your Honor. This was the day after this uh, concert. The morning after. And and this is what you received. It reads, "Hey, babe, that kick really blanked me up. I have terrible whiplash and my chest hurts. I'm going to take a nap. I'll call you when I wake up." That's ridiculous. Now. Ten days later, you have a stroke. Yes, Your Honor. Tell me how that developed. What happened? How did you know something had changed? Well, the headache kept getting uh, increasingly worse as the time went on. And another symptom that I started experiencing was trouble breathing. And these just progressed and continued progressing, um, sure. clearly to the point where I had a stroke. I really, I really am sorry. Ms. Clarkson, you look like you. you are in pain. Tell me what's on your mind. I, I'm just really baffled at the timeline. What bugs you is the 10 days. That and the fact that we offered him, we did our due diligence. We yes, followed protocol. So for But it, can, him it to can't come out, really surprise you that someone would get injured when a person jumped from the stage. Actually, on it really does. Right? I actually have it actually the, does. Your Honor, I have the shoes I was wearing that night. They're fuzzy boots I can show you. Um, and there's no way something like this. So, so Mr. Larson, you were him you were kicked with that boot. Head. I was kicked with that boot with a person I'm wearing it. He's very person. Person. Sheriff Matt, would foot you retrieve that boot yeah, for me? Hurts. Let me see the boot. Your attitude hurts, honey. And Matt, I'm telling you, it's uh, not your size, okay? No. A little bit too small, you are. Now, as I feel on this boot, there's a lot of padding. This is what you were kicked with. With someone's foot inside of it, yes. And Miss McNeil, with the back of my neck. This boot hitting him in the back of the head is what you remember. Yes, Your Honor. She gave them a "Here I come." A Why would you turn one, around, Mr. Like Larson? Did you hear? Here I come. I... Well, well, let me ask you this: Had you heard it in the past at Miss Starr's concert? Yes, Your Honor. So you know the dive is coming. Yes, Your Honor. Exactly. Did you hear it that night? Your Honor, I did hear the. Hmm. Thank you. Here I come. Uh, coming from the stage. By the time you are walking out, it all but, happened so fast. And he but chose to turn exactly. around. But that was, I was exactly, already that was turned his choice around. to turn around. But I never hit anyone. Someone else could have hit yes, you. Yes, you did. You folks, heard I, I, come, folks, and you had the precaution. Order in this court. We'll have order in this court. Why would he turn One around? One of the problems you all are having with this is that there's a 10-day delay between the, the uh, concert and the stroke. This you, court consulted a doctor okay. who's going to give us some light on this 10-day delay. All righty. Sheriff Matt, will you go get Dr. Vaughn? Sure. Dr. Vaughn, come on in. Okay, thank you. So, doctor, for the record, state your name, please. My name is Dr. Neelam Vaughn. Dr. Vaughn, could you please explain the plaintiff's injuries? It appears that Mr. Larson suffered from a blunt force trauma to the back of his head and later suffered from a vertebral artery dissection. Doctor, explain what happens to the body when a person is having a stroke. So you have an injured vessel, you have blood going through, and it either gets stopped all the way and blocks the artery, or it goes through very slowly. What happens is that you can't have enough oxygen in your brain, which you need for it to keep functioning. See that area right there, all that black area? That's dead tissue from a lack of oxygen, which is what we know as a stroke. Once the tissue dies, what happens to the brain? All that brain, that corresponds to things in your body. So, so, so basically, how your body is damaged depends on how much your brain is damaged. Absolutely, and where it's damaged. Now, doctor, here, 10 days from day one when he's hitting the back of the head to the time of the stroke, is, is that possible? Yes, it's possible. In fact, it's likely. Thank you, doctor. My pleasure. You are released. Mr. Larson, obviously, these injuries have been pretty difficult for you. Your Honor, for me, these injuries are life-changing. I make my money playing video games, and I need both my arms in order to play games properly. For me, this is 
game over. It is not game over. This is a new game beginning. This is a challenge, but your injuries do not define you in any way. You still have a very bright future, and it's time to get excited about the new normal. So things are going to be okay. Thank you, Ryan. I think I've heard enough. I'm ready to render my decision. In every personal injury case, there are three elements. The plaintiff, the people suing, you, Mr. Larson, must prove that your injuries were caused by something they did wrong. That is, wrong caused injury. Here, you decided to go to a concert with your girlfriend. You did not expect to have a life-changing event. And here we are. You all expected kind of the same thing, to have the last leg of your tour be triumphant with this stage dive, and that your forum hosted yet another successful event. Exactly. The problem is, is something obviously went wrong. Here, Mr. Larson, you kind of knew she was going to jump off the stage. In fact, how she was going to do it, because you heard, here I come. Mr. Larson, you were aware that there was a risk of injury. Here, you understood she was going to dive off the stage, and I find that that makes you partially responsible for this. But I find that you all are mostly responsible for it because this whole thing could have been prevented if you hadn't dived off the stage. Just common sense that when you dive off a stage, even a, a, a petite woman like yourself, someone can get hurt. Someone did get hurt. Mr. Larson, you are suing Ms. Reinhardt and Ms. Clarkson for $5 million. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Larson, I'm not giving you the full $5 million because you are partially responsible. And I find that you are 20% responsible for your injuries. Ms. Reinhardt, Ms. Clarkson, I find that each of you is 40% responsible for Mr. Larson's injuries. And in that regard, Mr. Larson, I'm not giving you $5 million, but I am awarding you $4 million against these defendants. That is my final decision, and this matter is adjourned. Our attorneys across America just viewed this case for the first time. Let's hear what Richard Harris has to say. This case shows us that an injury caused by someone may not be immediately felt by the victim. In a car wreck, for example, you may have so much adrenaline flowing through your system after the impact that the soreness and the pain may not be felt until two or three days later when the adrenaline is out of you, just as it did for the plaintiff in this case. So here's an important tip. When in doubt, get checked out.